Hi guys, it's me, Midnight, and yes, I am finally back from my week-long break, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm back, and I missed all of you a lot, um, and I especially missed uploading as well. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's video, which is, of course, the sleep aid. <laughs> um, <laughs> today's video is going to be, like, you know, chapter f four? I think that's the one we're on? Yeah, we're ch on chapter four. <laughs> Dang, already chapter- I did not expect it to be chapter four already. Anyways, today's video will be on chapter four of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, and I've noticed that a few of you guys keep li uh, like, they, you guys like it, from what I've seen, anyways, and, um, yeah, I hope today, um, I satisfy your needs, or as one of my, uh, friends put it, I'm feeding you guys crumbs. <laughs> I don't understand now, I don't understand why, why she's why she referred it to it like that but yeah anyways um i just wanted to say sorry that i was gone for so long but i got sick because of the change of seasons so yeah um anyways now on to the video i guess <laughs> uh huh <laughs> sorry babe I was watching BTS stuff like usual. What's up? Oh, um, no, I've actually taken a break from uploading. Why? <sighs> you want me to read you a story? Well, darling, all you had to do was ask. I don't sound the best a bit, but like, I'm getting better, so if you're fine with hearing me sound a bit congested, then yeah, I can read you a story if you want. Yeah, don't worry, I can do it, babe. I've been through worse. I'm a strong girl. I'm used to it, though. <laughs> okay, come on. Uh, let me guess. Harry Potter? <laughs> alright, alright, I got it, I got it. Mm. I hate being sick. Today I'm feeling better for a reason. Well, I will be better soon, anyways. Okay, um, where's the but? Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, um, what chapter was it? Four. What would I ever do without you, my love? <laughs> okay. Um. Okay. Okay. Um. Here. Wait, here goes nothing, I guess. You comfortable? You alright? Okay, good. Just making sure. <clears throat> Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Chapter 4. The Keeper of the Keys. Boom! They knocked again. Dudley jerked awake. Where's the cannon? He said stupidly. There was a crash behind them and Uncle Vernon came skidding into the room. He was holding a rifle in his hands. Now they knew what had been in the long, thin package he had brought with them. Who's there? He shouted. I warn you, I'm armed. There was a pause, then smash. The door was hit with such force that it swung clean off its hinges and with a deafening crash, landed flat on the floor. A giant of a man was standing in the doorway. His face was almost completely hidden by a long, shaggy mane of hair and a wild, tangled beard. But you could make out his eyes, glinting like black beetles under all the hair. The giant squeezed his way into the hut, stooping so that his head just brushed the ceiling. He bent down, picked up the door, and fitted it easily back into its frame. The noise of the storm outside dropped a little. He turned to look at them all. Couldn't make us a cup of, <laughs> couldn't make us a cup of tea, could he? 
It's not been an easy journey. He strode over to the sofa where Dudley sat, frozen with fear. Budge up, you great lump, said the stranger. Dudley squeaked and ran to hide behind his mother, who was crouching, terrified, behind Uncle Vernon. And here's Harry, said the giant. Harry looked up into the, fi- into the fierce, wild, shadowy face and saw that the beetle's eyes were crinkled in a smile. Last time I saw you, you was only a baby, said the giant. You look a lot like your dad, but you've got your mom's eyes. Uncle Vernon made a funny, rasping noise. (coughs) Sorry, babe. Um, I demand that you leave at once, sir, he said. You are breaking and entering. Ah, shut up, Dursley, you great prune, said the giant. He reached over the back of the sofa, jerked the gun out of Uncle Vernon's hands, bent it into a knot as easily as if it had been made out of rubber, and threw it into a corner of the room. Uncle Vernon (coughs) made another funny noise, like a mouse being trotted on. Anyway, Harry, said the giant, turning, um, turning his back on the Dursleys, a very happy birthday to you. Got some it for you here. I might have sat on it at some point, but it'll taste all right. From an inside pocket of his black overcoat, he pulled a slightly squashed box. Harry opened it with trembling fingers. Inside was a large, sticky chocolate cake, written Happy Birthday Harry, written on it with green icing. Harry looked up at the giant. He meant to say thank you. But the words got lost on the way to his mouth. What he said instead was, Who are you? The giant t- chuckled. True, I haven't introduced my- myself. <laughs> I don't know how to do this. Okay. Rubius Hagrid, keeper of keys and grounds of Hogwarts. He held out an enormous hand and shook, ha- shook Harry's whole arm. What about the tea then, eh? He said, rubbing his hands together. I'd not say no to some... How the heck? What? Okay, I'd not say no to some to some it stronger if you got it. Mind, I don't know how the heck to read Hagrid. What the heck? Oh, okay. Um, his eyes fell on the empty grate with the shriveled chip bags in it and snorted. He bent down over the fireplace, couldn't see what he was doing. But when he drew back a second later, there was a roaring fire there. It filled the whole damp hut with flickering light. Harry felt the warmth wash over him, as though he'd sunk into a hot bath. The giant sat back down on the sofa, which sagged under his weight, and began taking all sorts of things out of his pockets of his coat. A copper kettle, a squashy package of sausages, a poker a teapot, several chipped mugs, and a bottle of amber liquid that he took a swig from before starting to make tea. Soon, the hut was full of the sound of smell of the, of the sound and smell of sizzling sausage. Nobody said a thing while the giant was working, but he slid the first six fat, juicy, slightly burnt sausages from the poker. Dudley fidgeted a little. Uncle Vernon said sharply, Don't touch anything he gives you, Dudley. The giant chuckled darkly. You great puddin' of a son don't need fattening anymore, Dursley. Don't worry. He passed the sausages to Harry, who was so hungry he had never tasted anything so wonderful, but he still couldn't take his eyes off the giant. Finally, as nobody seemed about to explain anything, he said, I'm sorry, but I still don't, I still don't really know who you are. The giant took a gulp of tea and wiped his mouth with the back of his hand. Call me Hagrid. He said, everyone does, and like I told you, I'm keeper of keys at Hogwarts. You'll know all about Hogwarts, of course. Er, no, said Harry. Hagrid looked shocked. Um, sorry, Harry said quickly. Sorry, barked Hagrid, turning to stare at the Dursleys, who shrank back into the shadows. It's them I should be sorry. I knew you, were gonna, you weren't getting your letters, but I never thought... 
ye wouldn't even know about Hogwarts for crying out loud. Did you? Oh my God. <laughs> Did you never wonder where your parents learned it all? All what? Asked Harry. Oh what? Hagrid thundered. Now wait just one second. He had leapt to his feet in his anger. In his anger, he seemed to fill the whole hut. The Dursleys were cowering against the wall. Do you mean to tell me, he growled at the Dursleys, that this boy, this boy, knows nothing about, about anything? Harry thought that this was going a bit far. He had been to school after all, and his marks weren't bad. I know some things, he said. I can, you know, do math and stuff. But Hagrid simply waved his hand and said, about our world. I mean, your world, my world, your parents' world. What world? Hagrid looked as if he was about to explode. Dursley, he boomed. Uncle Vernon, who had gone very pale, whispered something that sounded like mimble wimble. Hagrid stared wildly at Harry. But you must know about your your mom and dad. I mean, they're famous. You're famous. What? My. My mom and dad weren't famous, were they? You don't know. You don't know. Hagrid ran his fingers through his hair, fixing Harry with bewildered style. You don't know what you are? He said finally. Uncle Vernon suddenly found his voice. Stop, he commanded. Stop right there, sir. I forbid you to tell the boy anything. A braver man than Vernon Dudley would have quailed under the furious look Hagrid now gave him. When Hagrid spoke, his every syllable trembled with rage. You never told him. Never told him what was in the letter Dumbledore left for him? I was there. I saw Dumbledore leave it, Dursley. And you've kept it from him for all these years. Kept what from me, said Harry eagerly. Stop. I forbid you, yelled Uncle Vernon in panic. Opportunity gave a gasp before her. Uh, go bully your heads, both of you, said Hagrid. Harry, you're a wizard. There was a silence in the hut. Only the sea and the whistling wind could be heard. I'm a what? gasped Harry. A wizard, Kurt, of course, said Hagrid, sitting back down on the sofa, which groaned and sank even lower. And a thumping good one, I'd say. Once he've been trained up a bit with mom and dad, with a mom and dad like yours, what else would you be? And I reckon it's about time you read your letter. Harry stretched out his hand at last to take the yellowish envelope, addressed in emerald green to Mr. H. Powder. The floor, hut on the rock, the sea. He pulled out the letter and read, Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Headmaster, Albus Dumbledore, Order, Order of Merlin, First Class, First Class, Grand Sorcerer, Chief Warlock, Supreme Mugwump, International Confederate of Wizards. Dear Mr. Potter, We are pleased to inform you that you have been accepted at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Please find enclosed a list of all the necessary books and equipment. Term begins on September 1st. We await your owl by no later than July 31st. Yours sincerely, Minerva McGonagall, Deputy Headmistress. Questions exploded inside of Harry's head like fireworks, and he couldn't decide which to ask first. After a few minutes, he stammered, What does it mean? They await my owl? Galloping Gorgons! That reminds me, clapping a hand to his forehead with enough force to knock over a cart horse, and from yet another pocket, inside his overcoat, he pulled an owl. A real live hour. Uh, oh my god, English. <laughs> a real live, rather ruffled looking owl. A long quill and a roll of parchment with his tongue between his teeth. He scribbled a note that Harry couldn't read upside down. Dear Professor Dumbledore, give Harry his letter, taking him to buy his things tomorrow. Weather's horrible. Hope you're well, Hagrid. Hagrid rolled up the note. Gave it to the owl, which clamped it in its beak, went to the door, and threw the owl out into the storm. Oh my gosh. <sighs> then he came back and sat down. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, babe. You're going to have to deal with that a lot. <laughs>
Um, then he came and sat back down, as though this was, a nor- was as normal as talking on the telephone. Harry realized his mouth uh, realized his mouth was open and closed it quickly. Where was I? said Hagrid. But at the moment, Uncle Vernon, still ashen faced but looking very angry, moved into the firelight. He's not going, he said. Hagrid grunted. I'd like to see a great muggle like you stop him, he says. Oh what? Harry said Harry, interested. A muggle. It's what we call non magic folk like them. And it's your bad luck you grew up in a family of biggest muggles I ever laid my eyes on. Um, we swore when we took him in we'd put a stop to that rubbish, said Uncle Vernon. Swore we'd stamp it out of him. Wizard indeed. You knew, said Harry. You knew I'm a, a, a wizard? Knew, shrieked Aunt Petunia suddenly. Knew, of course we knew. How could you not be, my dreaded sister being what she was? Oh, she got a letter just like that and disappeared off to that that, that school and came home every vacation with her pockets full of frog spawn, turning teacups into rats. I was the only one who saw her for what she was. A freak. But for my mother and father, oh no, it was Lily this, Lily that. They were proud of having a witch in the family. She stopped to draw a deep breath, then ranting on. It seemed she'd been wanting to say all of this for years. Then she met that Potter at that school. They left, got married, and had you. And of course I knew you'd be the same. Just as strange, just as, as abnormal, and then... If you please, she went and got herself blown up and we got landed with you. Harry had gone very white. As soon as he found his voice, he said, Blown up? You told me they died in a car crash. Car crash, roared Harry. Nope. (laughs) Car crash, roared Hagrid, jumping up so angrily that the Dursleys scuttled back to their corner. How could a car crash kill Lily and James Potter? It's an outrage, a scandal. Harry Potter, not knowing his own history, when every kid in our world knows his name. But why? What happened? Uh, uh, Harry asked urgently. The anger faded from Hagrid's face. He looked suddenly anxious. I never expected this, he said, in a low, worried voice. I had no idea when Dumbledore told me there might be trouble getting hold of you. How much he didn't know. Ah, uh, Harry, I don't know if I'm the right person to tell you, but someone's gotta. You can't go off to Hogwarts not knowing. He threw a dirty look at the Dursleys. Well, it's best you know as much as I can tell you. Mind, I can't tell you everything. It's a great mystery. Parts of it. He sat down, stared into the fire for a few seconds, and then said, It begins, I suppose. <laughs> With a person called, but it's incredible you don't know his name, everyone in our world knows. Who? Well, I don't like saying the name if I can help it. No one does. Why not? Gulp and gargoyles, Harry. People are still scared. Blimey, this is difficult. See, there was this wizard who went bad. As bad as you could go. Worse. Worse than worse. His name was Hagrid Gulp. But no words came out. Could you write it down? Harry suggested. Nah, can't spell it. Oh, right. Voldemort. Hagrid shuddered. Don't make me say it again. Anyways, this this wizard, about 20 years ago now, started looking for fellows. Got him too. Some were afraid. Some just wanted a bit of his power. Because he was getting himself power, alright. Dark days, Harry. Didn't know who to trust, didn't dare get friendly with with strange wizards or witches. Terrible things happened. Um, he was taken over. Of course, some stood up to him, and he killed them. Horribly. One of the only places left was Hogwarts. Reckon Dumbledore, the, Dumbledore is the only one you know who was afraid of. Didn't dare try taking the school. Not just then, anyway. Now your mom and dad were as good as a witch and wizard as I ever knew. Head boy and girl at Hogwarts in their day. 
Suppose the mystery is why you know who never tried to get him on his side before. Probably knew they were too close to Dumbledore to want anything to do with the dark side. Maybe he thought he could persuade him. Maybe he just wanted him out of the way. All anyone knows is he turned up in the village where you was all living on Halloween ten years ago. You was just a year old. He came to your house and and Hagrid suddenly pulled out a very dirty spotted handkerchief and blew his nose with a sound like a foghorn. Sorry, but it's that sad. Knew your mom and dad and nicer people couldn't find. Anyway, you know who killed him. And then, and this is the real mystery of the thing, he tried to kill you too. Wanted to make a clean job of it, I suppose. Or maybe he just liked killing by then. But he couldn't do it. Never wondered how... Never wondered how you got that mark on your forehead? That was no ordinary cut. That's what you get when a powerful, evil curse touches you. Took care of your mom and dad in your house. Even... But it didn't work on you. And that's why you're famous, Harry. No one's ever killed... Uh, no one's ever lived after he decided to kill him. No one except you. And he had killed some of the best witches and wizards of the age. The McKinnons, the Bones, the Prewitz. And you was only a baby and you lived. Something very painful was going on in Harry's mind. As Haggard's story came to a close, he saw again the blinding flash of green light, more clearly than he had ever remembered it before. <sighs> and he remembered something else, for the first time in his life. A high, cold, cruel laugh. Haggard was watching him sadly. Took you from the ruined house myself. A Dumbledore's orders brought you to, to this lot. Load of old tosh, said Uncle Vernon. Harry jumped. He had almost forgotten that the Dursleys were there. Uncle Vernon certainly seemed to have gotten back his courage. He was glaring at Haggard with his fist clenched. Now, you listen here, boy, he snarled. I accept there's something strange about you. Probably nothing a good beating wouldn't have cured. And as for all this about your parents, well, they were weirdos, no denying it, and the world's better off without knowing without them, in my opinion. Asked for all they got, getting mixed up with these wizard types. Just what I expected. Always knew they'd come to a sticky end. But at the moment, Hagrid leapt from the sofa and drew a battered pink umbrella from inside his coat. Pointing this at Uncle Vernon like a sword, he said, I'm warning you, Dursley. I'm warning you. One more word. Endangered of being speared on the edge of an umbrella... By a bearded giant, Uncle Vernon's courage failed again. He flattened himself against the wall and fell silent. That's better, said Hagrid. Breathing heavily, sitting back down on the sofa, with which this time sagged right down to the floor, Harry, meanwhile, still had questions to ask. Hundreds of them. But what happened to full- Sorry. I mean, you know who. Good question, Harry. Disappeared. Vanished. Same night he tried to kill you. Makes you uh, even more famous. The biggest mystery, see? He was getting more and more powerful. Why'd he go? Some say he died. Cod swallow, in my opinion. Don't know if he had human, if he had enough human in him left to, left to die. Some say he's still out there, biding his time. Like, but I don't believe it. People who was on his side came back to ours. Some of them came out of kind of trances. Don't reckon they could have done it if he was coming back. Most of us reckon he's still out there, somewhere, but lost his powers. Too weak to carry on. Because something about you finished him, Harry. There was something going on that night he hadn't counted on. I don't know what it was. No one does. But something about you stumped in, all right? Hargard looked at Harry with warmth and respect blazing in his eyes, but Harry, instead of feeling pleased and proud, felt quite sure there had been a horrible mistake. A wizard? Him? How could he possibly be? He'd spent his life being clouded by Dudley and bullied by Aunt Petunia and Uncle Vernon. 
if he was really a wizard. <sighs> Why haven't they been turned into a warty toads every time they try to lock him in his cupboard? If he'd once defeated the green, the great sorcerer in the world, how come Dudley had always been able to kick him around like a football? Haggard, he said quietly. I think you must have a mistake. I don't think I can be a wizard. To, su to his surprise, Haggard chuckled. Not a wizard, eh? Never made things happen when you was scared or angry. Harry looked into the fire. Now he came to think about it, which about it. Everything odd, every odd thing that had m ever made his aunt and uncle furious with him had happened when he, Harry, had been upset or angry. <laughs> Chased, Dud Chased by Dudley's gang, he had somehow found himself out of their reach. Dreading going to school with that ridiculous haircut, he managed to make it grow back. <laughs> In the very last time Dudley had hit him, Hadn't he got his revenge without even realizing he was doing it? Hadn't he set a boa constructor on him? Harry looked back at him, smiling, and saw that Haggard was positively beaming at him. See, said Haggard, Harry Potter, not a wizard. You wait, you'll be famous right at, you'll be right famous at Hogwarts. But Uncle Vernon wasn't going to give in without a fight. Haven't I told you he's not going, he hissed. He's going to Stonewall High, and he'll be grateful for it. I read those letters, and, his, and he needs all sorts of rubbish. Spell books and wands, and if he wants to go, a great muggle like you won't stop him. Growled Haggard. Stop Lily and James Potter's son going to Hogwarts? You're mad. His name's been down ever since he was born. He's off to the finest school of witchcraft and wizardry in the world. Seven years there, and he won't know himself. He'll be with youngsters of his own sort for a change, and he'll be under the greatest headmaster Hogwarts has ever had. Dum Albus Dumbled, I am not paying for some crackpot old fool to teach him mag magic tricks. I can't speak English, apparently, <laughs> yelled Uncle Vernon. But he had finally gone too far. Haggard seized his umbrella and whirled it over his head. Never, he thundered. Insult. Albus Dumbledore in front of me. He brought the umbrella swishing down through the air to point at Dudley. There was a flash of violet light and a sound like a firecracker. A sharp squeal and the next second Dudley was dancing on the spot with his hands clasped over his fat bottom, howling in pain. When he turned his back on when he turned his back on them, Harry saw a curly pig's tail poking through a hole in his trousers. Uncle Vernon roared, pulling Umpetunia and Dudley into the other room. He cast one last terrified look at Haggard and slammed the door behind them. <sighs> Haggard looked down at his umbrella, stroked his beard. Shouldn't have lost any temper, he said ruefully. But it didn't work. Anyway, it meant to turn it into a pig. But I suppose he was so much like a pig anyways, there wasn't much left to do. <sighs> Be grateful if you didn't mention that to anyone at Hogwarts. <laughs> he said, I'm a... Uh, not supposed to do magic, strictly speaking. I was allowed to do a bit of it to follow you and get your lettuce to you and stuff. One of the reasons I was so keen to take on the job. Why aren't you supposed to do magic? asked Harry. Oh, well, I was at Hogwarts. Hogwarts. I was at Hogwarts myself, but I er, got expelled. To tell you the truth, in my third year, they snapped me wand in half and everything. But Dumbledore let me stay on as gamekeeper. Great man, Dumbledore. Why were you expelled? It's getting late, and we've got lots to do tomorrow, said Haggard loudly. Gotta get up to get to town, get all your books in that. He took off his thick black coat and threw it to Harry. You can keep, you can kip under that. He said, don't mind if it wriggles a bit. I think I still got a couple of dormice in one of the pockets. And that's the end of chapter four. Oh, crap. I keep forgetting you fall asleep every time I read you the book. <laughs> mm. I love you, babe. And I feel bad that you had to put up with my sick self for a week. But thank you for helping me. I love you.
so much.